the market panic has really pivoted from fearing an oil market in short supply to actually a potential breakup of OPEC plus, and in fact, an overproduction free for all scenario, a la April 2020. Um, but in our view, yeah, I mean, do, OPEC, do, is there a way to yeah. Louise for you to, to to handicap that risk because? You know, we interviewed uh, the, the Saudi energy minister the other day, yesterday, Abdulaziz bin Salman, and, and we talked to him, and, and he was confident that even if the new deal to add more barrels couldn't get done, that the current deal where they wouldn't add more barrels, which theoretically is bullish for oil prices, that that would hold. It doesn't appear the market, or it appears the market is starting to discount that a bit. Yeah, I... I think that the current OPEC plus uh, discord really just highlights not only the fragility of the markets and let's remember in a very specific COVID-19 context, but also just again, this broader animosity brewing between a group of 23 nations that are forced to come together and manage the market. But of course, these countries have direct uh, competition interests in selling their oil at the highest price possible and for the most sustainable period of time. And then to make matters more complex, uh, there's the Iran nuclear deal, which could become sort of a key bargaining chip in determining new quotas. And we could actually also see a potentially a new deal that could actually bring in non-contributing members, such as Iran, Venezuela, or potentially Libya. Yeah, Iran could come back on the market. Venezuela, well, the, the, the Venezuelan oil production is back to levels not seen since 1927. But Iran certainly could come back on the market in a big way. The UAE has said, we want to pump more oil. We have invested billions. If we stick to the quotas that are implied, we will lose disproportionately more than other nations because our capacity has gone up. Do you believe, Louise, is there a way to handicap the percentage risk that the UAE, one of the biggest producers in the world, does leave OPEC? Yeah, I think that you're correct that the UAE, as well as some of the other core Middle East uh, OPEC producing countries, have done a lot of the heavy lifting in the past 13 months to rebalance the oil market. So now, understandably, they're looking for a bit more leniency in their quotas. So I think that these are some uh, very sort of prescient points that will be hashed out in the next couple of weeks. Um, but from our view, we see that, that OPEC plus has a bit of market flexibility and for August of 2021, that they could bring back about 1.6 million barrels per day, yeah. uh, or the so-called uh, call on OPEC, and, re and keep, the, keep the oil market in a theoretical equilibrium. So there is room to maneuver, yeah, and according but the question is, 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 who are these quotas going to go to? Does it go to the UAE? Does it go to Russia? Does it go to Iraq? And this is still the question that um, the jury is really still out on. Well, Abdul Aziz telling us that if 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 OP, if the UAE does get what it wants, what it wants, Russia will have to disproportionately take more of a hit. Very quickly, Louise, what's your prediction for the U.S. producers? Prices are still much higher than they were six months ago. Let's not forget that. Will U.S. production come back online in a meaningful way? We are down nearly two million barrels from our high of just two and a half, three years ago. Yeah, Brian, I, I still think that U.S. shale producers uh, are still really demonstrating this reluctance to invest and increase their own production uh, to actually meet and plug the supply deficit. So, uh, and the rationale behind this is largely related to producers sort of being really locked into hedging positions at lower oil prices that don't necessarily incentivize production growth. So this increase in production to get back to this 13 million barrel per day uh, peak U.S. oil production, this is not something that we are forecasting in the near short term. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.